I really enjoy it when movies break genres. Welcome to The Daily Needs, a daily look at classic films, modern cinema, and the world of professional wrestling. And today I'm talking about uh, the 1971 film McCabe and Mrs. Miller. Um, now, if I describe the plot to you, uh, which I'm about to do, you're going to assume something about it. Let's try this experiment. A gambler and a prostitute join forces to... Uh, build up a small town with their business, which is a whorehouse and also a mine. And eventually the town becomes very big and prosperous, and then a big organization comes in to buy them out. They refuse, and then there's a shootout in town, um, leaving everybody important dead. That sounds like a western to me. That sounds like it's going to take place in the desert in Arizona, and like horses and whiskey and um like the boardwalk sidewalks in front of all the buildings and all that there's an image in my head when i hear a plot like that but this movie just kind of does things in a different direction it takes place in the pacific northwest so every scene it's either raining or snowing everyone looks cold um so it's not like the hot desert like you'd get in in like stagecoach or like other like westerns um uh, the, like the hero's not the super brave like uh, i'm doing what's right and i'm gonna stop those bad guys he's scared he's frightened of the um the gunmen when they come into town and he spends most of the shootout hiding in corners waiting for them to peek around so we can get him from behind and it's a different look at that genre it's a deconstruction of that genre it's just like just like that movie cabin in the woods that came out a few years ago just took everything about horror movies and turned it upside down. This does everything about westerns and kind of flips it upside down. But it does it still very seriously. It takes itself very seriously. And, and the characters all feel so real. Um, it doesn't feel like you're watching a movie and you're being introduced to everyone as they come in. It feels like you're getting dropped into a town and stuff is happening. So you kind of have to figure it out on your own a little bit. But it's still intriguing and it's still a followable if that's a real word. Um, it's a pretty good movie. Um, it's not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, it's not my favorite movie. Uh, but it wasn't bad. Uh, the songs of Leonard Cohen used helped a lot. They really helped uh, set the tone um, right from the get-go of what this movie was. And, I don't know, maybe it's just because I've been seeing trailers for the new Magnificent Seven movie, and that movie is awesome. Like, I've been itching to watch a classic western, and this isn't quite what I... <laughs> what I had in mind, but uh, it was a good, good little film. Um, not quite my cup of tea, but still, still a quality movie. Uh, yeah, I realize that I don't have a lot to say about it. Just, it's nice, it's nice seeing a genre deconstructed like that. And seeing, like, tropes you expect to see in one setting go down in another setting and how that changes, how the story is told. And that's a cool little uh, thing to look at with this film. Um, but yeah, not a lot to say. That's really it. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to talk about uh, some, some, uh, some more Monday Night Raw and stuff that's been going on in wrestling over the past week. But until then, like, share, and subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter at The Daily Neats. Throw a comment down in the comment section below. Um, let me know your favorite Western movie. Yeah, we'll go with that. But until tomorrow, bye.